In the last few years, the news has been full of new planets discovered around other stars. Usually, these are discovered by the observed light curve from the star where the planet partially eclipses the star, or by the motion of the star as the planet causes it to wobble. Very recently, we actually visually detected a planet orbiting former Holt. We can see distant objects in our own solar system, which will be much dimmer than Nibiru. Remember that Nibiru is large, supposedly Earth-sized, or larger. Some claim that it has not orbit around a dark star, which will be even larger. Even though we can detect substellar objects, and now even planets around other stars, why can't we find Nibiru? Some have suggested that it is invisible. Really? There's a quote for that. The invisible and the non-existent look very much alike. Since Nibiru is so easily debunked, we're surprised that anyone would make fraudulent videos claiming to show it. Nevertheless, such videos are indeed made and apparently have a large viewership on YouTube. Fixed images are common. More insidious are cases where the perpetrator presents real footage mistaken of objects such as planets but lies about the object identity. The planet Nibiru has a unique place in the constellation of 2012 claims. It's never been detected, cannot exist, and even if it was real, according to its promoter, isn't actually supposed to arrive until decades or even centuries after 2012. However, it's a very popular subject among both debunkers and proponents alike. The fictional planet called Nibiru was proposed by a self-taught scholar of Sumerian cuneiform named Zachariah Sitchin. In the Book of the Twelfth Planet, written in 1976, Sitchin used an image from a particular Sumerian seal, along with his own translation of Sumerian cuneiform, to argue that the Sumerians knew of twelve planets in the solar system, that the twelfth planet is Nibiru, that it orbits the sun once every 3600 years, that beings that the Sumerians call gods live on it, that these beings arrived on Earth some 450,000 years ago, that they created humans by genetic engineering of female apes, and that basically, we were they slaves digging up their gold for them. Not really. That's his claim. Sitchin leans heavily on translation of ancient text, in particular his translation of ancient text, which do not match the translations of others more verified scholars. In addition, Sitchin ignores a vast body of research conducted by others, apparently, because it conflicts with his interpretations. The examples are plentiful with the twelfth planet. Sitchin has a habit of deciding what an ancient word really means in his personal, unique translation, and then proceeding as if this is the end of the story that nobody else's translation are more accurate or that other interpretations even exist. Many of his claims regarding the translation of Sumerian cuneiform are discussed in detail and debunked by Michael Heiser. In conclusion, we have shown that Zechariah Sitchin is not a scholar of Sumerian cuneiform. He ignores a rich body of scholarship and develops his own unique and unsupported translation, mixing freely between languages as he sees fit. Serious scholars of Sumerian text have challenged his work on issues of poor translations, poor scholarship and special pleading. Sitchin's concept of Nibiru is not supported by the text that he uses as the basis for his claims. Sitchin's claims run counter to much that we know and understand about our solar system. There are fundamental flaws with Sitchin's claim orbit of Nibiru, including the claim of its period and the position of its perihelion. Sitchin's claims for Nibiru's orbit are impossible. The claim orbit will be highly unstable and Nibiru will have been ejected from the solar system by the gravity of the gas giants long ago. When confronted with the lack of visual evidence, the proponents of Nibiru rely on special pleading, for example, that Nibiru is invisible and leaks or hidden.